sense or something. But there is time for everything. There is time to be a student, there is time to be a teacher. And we can see here that our Lord Jesus Christ was not taking it lightly because he expects us or he expected us to, to be an oracle of God, his oracle. And everybody who wants to be the oracle of God must have something he can he has to feed the people with. That is why it's likely this this, um, this section this morning is a baby and an adult. A baby in the Lord. We always be is very unskillful in, in what? Also especially in the words of righteousness according to verse 13. Which means he's still drinking milk. It's good to be a baby, but it's good to grow. The Bible tells us in Luke 2.52, 252 that Jesus himself increased in wisdom and in stature. So if Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, we too we should increase in wisdom and in stature. Which means we cannot be an imbecile because there is no way we have to be an imbecile in the world. Our brain must grow. And how is it going to grow? It is by the word. We have to put the word in our brain and use it appropriately when it is, it is needed. Most especially when we have to face the devil when we have to tell other people about Christ, Jesus used the word in Matthew chapter 4 to defeat the devil. And we too, we need to have the word. And it is whatever we have, we are going to use. If you don't have it, don't memorize it. That's why the Bible tells us that we should meditate in the word day and night. Also Joshua. And in Psalm 1, 1, 2, to 3. The Bible tells us that our delight should be in the world and we should meditate in it day and night. And for Joshua, it's says so that you can have good success. Any child of God who doesn't have the word, who doesn't memorize it and meditate in it, there is no way you can have good success because it will be like how, how the devil um, cheated Eve in the garden, in the garden of Eden. He twisted the word. If, if he has known the word of God, he could have corrected the devil. Don't cheat me. I know what the word is saying. And they have, they have been told what the word can do and not of what God the word can do. He can heal. He delivers. And it promotes. There are so many things the word of God can do for us. And I pray that this morning, even if we are babies, we aspire to go. And we shall be adults in the Lord so that we can be useful in the things of the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we are looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 12 to 14. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. And again, this time we are being told the difference between babies and adults. We learned not too long ago about the difference between young men and old men. Young men strong, old men wise. Um, young men seeing visions, 
old man, dreamy dreams, and so on and so forth. Now, today, they say clearly, you are a baby, if you are drinking milk, which is to be expected, First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, First Peter 2, verse 2 says, you, you have to drink the sincere milk of the Word of God so that you can grow thereby. Milk is available for your growth. But then they say, when you reach a certain stage of growth, now you move to meat. And uh, I told some of my people before, when you get to some stage, you move to cracking bones. Now, so what I think we want to explain very briefly is what exactly do we mean by milk? And what do we mean by meat? When you are just born again, we keep on telling you very, very sweet things. God loves you. John 3, 16. John loves you. We tell you God is love. First John chapter 4. That's it. They are all true. You must be born again, of course. We will present that one to you. John chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. If you are not born again, you cannot, uh, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Then we begin to teach you that after you are saved, you need to be sanctified. Because after you are born again, I mean, according to what we teach, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all things are to become new. All things are to be completely run away. So we tell you, oh, now you are born again. Your life must show it. Uh, oh, certain old things you were doing before, which you must never do again. And then we know that uh, you will struggle a little bit at that initial stage to live a Christ-like life. So we go ahead and teach you, you must be sanctified. You need a heart of flesh to help you live the new life. Ezekiel 36, from verse 24 to 26. Ezekiel 36, 24 to 26. So we, we tell you, you need a heart of flesh because your original heart is made of stone. And that stone must be removed and replaced with a heart of flesh. Then we go further to teach you, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need power. Power of the Holy Spirit to enable you to share your newfound life, your witness, to tell people boldly by, by the help of the Holy Spirit. And we'll make it clear as you grow steadily, you have to live for you. Because God said so. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. First Peter 1, 14 to 16. The one who called you expects you to be obedient to him. He wants you to be holy because he himself it's holy. As a matter of fact, we begin to make it clear to you that without holiness, you will not see God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, verse 14. And then when we notice that 
you are beginning to ask questions. Uh, you told me that whatever I ask Jesus Christ, he will do for me. Yes. And of course, when you are a baby in Christ, almost all your prayers are answered. But as you begin to grow, you discover that maybe the answers are not coming as fast as they used to do <laughs> when you started. Oh, then we point uh, to John 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16 says, uh, there's a little fine line there that says, uh, you have not chosen me, I've chosen you, that you should go, bring forth fruit, that your fruit should abide. Then, whatever you ask the Father in my name, uh, will be done. Oh. Many people stop at that stage. They are born again, they are sanctified, they are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they are winning souls as much as possible, they are obedient to God. Um, Some become workers, begin to work for God, sing and uh, do things to please God. And then at a stage, some people become even restless. They believe that uh, there must be something more. Particularly when they begin to hear of things like John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12. That Jesus Christ said, the works that I did, you shall do also. And greater works than this shall you do. And they begin to now hunger for more. Milk won't do anymore now. They want to do the works that Jesus Christ did. And they begin to hear of Mark 11, 22 to 24, Mark 11, 22 to 24, that, uh, that I need the kind of faith that can move mountains. Particularly as uh, some mountains are beginning to show up in their own lives and in the lives of their converts. And then they begin to Meditate on Mark 16 from verse 17 to 18. Mark 16 from verse 17 to 18 that uh, you have to cast out demons and to heal the sick. They have to become immune to poison. And if I if I pastor, sooner or later. The congregation will come to you and say, uh, please, can you explain why we are not achieving all these things? Then you know your child has grown. He's no longer satisfied with me. He's now crying. I mean, he's no longer interested in ordinary milk, he wants meat. At that stage, you are compelled, as a good father, to begin to share some tough stuff. You begin to share something like uh, John 16, verse 33. John 16, verse 33, where the Lord said that uh, in this world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer and overcome the world. You begin to share uh, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. That, is, that love means. Uh, you are going to be more than an overcomer, but being an overcomer means that <laughs> there will be maybe one or two battles 
provide. Then you begin to talk to them about Romans 12, uh, from verse 1 to 2, Romans 12, from verse 1 to 2, about being a living sacrifice. That your life is supposed to be like the life of a sacrifice that is already given to uh, what we call them, witch doctor, herbalist, an animal that you give to him because you wanted something from him and then he can uh, do whatever he likes with that animal. That's your being a Christian means you surrendered and you did suddenly begin to understand the word surrender to God that whatever he says in whatever the situation you will not complain. We begin to explain to them things like Psalm 34, verse 1, Psalm 34, verse 1, and we bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. Meet, talk, talk. It won't be long before you begin to let them know that. Uh, in John chapter 1, verses 14 and 17. John 1, 14 and 17, that uh, Jesus Christ became flesh. The Word became flesh. And we beheld His glory, the glory of God, the only begotten Son of the Father, full of yes. grace, and truth. And John 1 17, that law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That this thing is not just grace alone, there is truth that must be added. You begin to let them know that yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, God is love. Yes, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. Yes, Jesus is your husband, is uh, certainly coming back for you again. But Ephesians 5:27, Ephesians 5:27 says he's only coming back for a bride without spot, without blemish. You begin to let them know the need for self-discipline. You begin to talk to them about uh, First Corinthians chapter 9, from verse 24 to the end, 1 Corinthians 9, to, uh, from verse 24 to the end. This is in the New Testament. This is written by the Apostle of Grace himself. And he says, I keep my body under control. We begin to tell them about Philippians chapter 3. If we want, from verse 7 to 15, Philippians 3, 7 to 15, that even an apostle says, after I surrendered all, because I want to know Christ more, I still press on. They begin to hear things like, I've been done all, stand. You begin to tell them that It is in the New Testament that it is written. It is a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of the living God. You begin to tell them about 
That's Hebrews 10, 31. And you begin to tell them about Hebrews 12, verse 29. Hebrews 12, verse 29. That our God is a consuming fire. He is love, yes, but it's also a consuming fire. And there are two sides to God. And you will find, you will always find among your children those who will say, this is too hard. I don't think I can take this. And it won't be a surprise thing if some of them drift away into a church where all the preach, all they make available is made. It will heal you, it will prosper you, it will promote you, it will protect you, it will defend you. That's all you hear in the summer. Seven steps to breakthroughs. Three steps to accelerate step promotion. Etc. And they are all true. Make up the world for you to grow back. But then you will find some of your children who will say, For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever is going to cost. I want to be all that God wants me to be. My prayer this morning is that you'll be one of those children Amen. who will not be satisfied with meat for long. Amen. But not only will they want the meat of the word of God, they'll be ready for even cracking bones so they can get to the mouths. May your request be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.